So I'd now like to turn to the second type of DNA test, and that's the mitochondrial DNA test, and that helps detect relatives um, that are connected to you via a direct female line. And the reach of this test goes back about 150 tree, and both myself and my dad tested our mitochondrial DNA. And he is haplogroup H, I'm haplogroup T. Now, there's a distinction here, because with our direct male line, we both share the same direct male line, but um, we have different direct female lines. So um, he inherited his mitochondrial DNA from his mother. I inherited my mitochondrial DNA from my mother. And Family Tree DNA sends you a very nice map that shows the migration of the um, various haplogroups out of Africa. So you'll see that for my, my dad on the left, who is haplogroup H, um, as the humans came out of Africa and went up to Greece, uh, haplogroup H moved across to Italy, and then a group of them moved north to Scandinavia, and a group of them moved south along the coast to Spain. In contrast, the haplogroup T, which is my group on the right-hand side, they followed the same route out of Africa, but from Greece they made a beeline for Belgium. Uh, so, two different uh, types of migratory pattern. All very interesting, but it doesn't tell me anything about my great-great-great-great-grandparents on my direct female line. Um, and in terms of using mitochondrial DNA uh, for a fishing trip, it really is the least productive of all three tests. And the reason for that is that because with every generation you lose the surname. Um, the daughters change their surnames when they get married, and their children change their surnames when they get married. So along the female line you lose the surname and it makes it very, very difficult to trace the female line back. So mitochondrial DNA is of more use for uh, assessing a specific question. And the specific question that I'd like to use to illustrate this is the story of Anastasia. Now, Anastasia was made into a movie and was made into a cartoon, but both of these took uh, historical fact as the basis for the story, but then quickly um, uh, spiraled into the realm of fiction, uh, proving the adage, never let the truth get in the way of a good story. But the story of fact is a very good story, and uh, fact is in many ways stranger than fiction. And it starts off with the Russian royal family of Tsar Nicholas II, um, and here's a photograph of him with his wife and their five children, four daughters and uh, a little boy, and everything was going fine until the Russian Revolution of 1917, when they were arrested, and sadly, a year later, they were executed and buried in an unmarked grave. Uh, shortly after the execution, rumours began to emerge that two of the children had escaped. And two years later, in 1920, this young woman was fished out of canal in Berlin, where she had jumped from a bridge trying to commit suicide. She refused to give her name. Um, she spoke German with a Russian accent. Uh, she was put in a mental hospital where she stayed for 18 months. And during that time in the mental hospital... Uh, rumours started that she was in fact Anastasia. So this argument raged for many, many years. Members of the surviving royal Russian Russian royal family came to visit her and swore that she was. Other members came to visit her, visit her and swore that she wasn't. And so she was buffeted from pillar to post, really. Um, uh, finally, she uh, took refuge in the US and um, she lived there, got married to a chap called Anderson, changed her name to Anna Anderson, and finally passed away in 1984. The day after she died, her body was cremated, thus destroying all DNA evidence that might have been there. Seven years after that, in 91, with the dissolution of the former Soviet Union, Documentary evidence came to light which suggested that the site of the burial of the Russian royal family was known. Archaeologists went out there and they found nine bodies in this burial site. Now the Russian royal family, there were seven of them all together, but when they were shot, the um, 
they also had several members of their staff shot as well. So the question was for investigators, do six of these bodies share the exact same mitochondrial DNA? Because, of course, the five children would have received their mitochondrial DNA from their mother, their direct female line. So the researchers were looking for um, six bodies with matching mitochondrial DNA. And that would be very suggestive that these uh, bodies, in fact, belonged to the Russian royal family, specifically the queen and her five children. Uh, but also they wanted to ascertain if the mitochondrial DNA found in these remains matched a living direct female line descendant of the Russian royal family's, uh, the children of the Russian royal family. And they found a living descendant, and here he is. It's Prince Philip, the uh, Duke of Edinburgh. And he is connected to the children of the Russian royal family by um, a direct female line. In fact, his mother would have been first cousins with Anastasia. And... Um, they are connected via uh, the common ancestor of Prince Philip's great-grandmother, who herself was a descendant, a daughter, of Queen Victoria. So Queen Victoria's mitochondrial DNA passed down along a direct female line to Prince Philip, and also along a direct female line to Anastasia. So, DNA testing was done. What did the DNA test tell us? Well, they found that four of the nine bodies found in the burial site had mitochondrial DNA that was an exact match to F Prince Philip. And this, they concluded, was the mother and three of her daughters. But two of the children were missing. And this was completely in line with the rumours that had started um, after the execution of the royal family in 1918. And it raised the, the question, well then, was Anna Anderson in fact Anastasia, as she had claimed to be all along? Um, just when we thought that there was no hope of finding an answer to this question, researchers came across a tissue sample um, uh, from an operation that Anna Anderson had had in 1979, when she'd had an operation on her intestine. And they also found a hair sample in a book that had belonged to her husband. So they tested the tissue t sample from the intestine and the hair sample, and they both matched exactly. But... Anna Anderson's mitochondrial DNA did not match Prince Philip or any of the bodies in the burial site, indicating that there was no way that Anna Anderson was Anastasia. It then raised the question, well, if she wasn't Anastasia, who was she? Well, back in the 1920s, when she first appeared and came to notoriety, um, the remaining members of the Russian royal family, some of them got together and hired an investigator. Um, and the investigator came to the conclusion that uh, Anna Anderson, in fact, wasn't Anastasia. She was Franziska Szanskowska, who was a Polish factory worker whose fiancé had been killed in World War I. And within weeks of this sad news, she had dropped a grenade by accident in the munitions factory where she worked. It had exploded, killing a man in front of her and injuring herself in the head. Thereafter, she had a history of mental illness with two episodes in a, in a mental hospital. And then in 1918, she, or 1920, she disappeared from her lodgings in Berlin and was never heard of again. Now, when this came out, they located the family of Franziska Szanskowska, and she was visited by her brother, Felix, but he denied knowing her. And years later, when uh, she was living in Germany, the Nazis uh, got hold of, Shan of the Shanskowska family, uh, asked them to, again, visit uh, this woman and confirm whether or not it was her, their sister, um, and they denied it as well. Uh, so in order to find out if the Shanskowskas were lying, um, in... The two, early 2000s, or so, in the early years of the 21st, um, they were able to locate the grandson of Francisca's sister Gertrude. And he agreed to take the DNA test, the mitochondrial DNA test. Now, of course, um, Francisca would have received her mitochondrial DNA from her mother, and her mother would also have passed her mitochondrial DNA along a direct female line, 
uh, down to Gertrude and down to Gertrude's daughter, who then would have passed the mitochondrial DNA down to her son. So by testing uh, him, it would have been possible to, to find out what mitochondrial DNA uh, belonged to the, to the Shanskowska family. And it was an exact match with the mitochondrial DNA of Anna Anderson, thus proving that Anna Anderson, in fact, was Franziska Shanskowska, an unfortunate young girl who suffered a terrible uh, tragedy um, and then was injured in a, received a head injury and had a history of mental illness thereafter. Now, in 2007, two further bodies were discovered and those bodies matched Prince Philip and the two remaining siblings, indicating that um, the, the matched Prince Philip and in fact were the two remaining siblings. And this brought the story of Anastasia to a close. So by testing mitochondrial DNA, one is able to confirm relations on the direct female line and exclude people who are not related. And that is the story of Anastasia.